All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, episode eighty-four. Uh, I am the Codfather Richard, and joined with me today is Tomer, Budget Commander. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. I love I love talking about hot takes, so I'm excited for this one. <laughs> uh, Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. What's up? Hey, what's up, Richard? I'm doing well. And we have Phil Brewer's Kitchen back back on the podcast. How you doing, Phil? Uh, pretty good. Coming down from a cold. I hope my voice isn't too nasal, but uh, yeah, got to talk about some hot takes, although it doesn't seem too hot. We'll All see. right. <laughs> so as, as Phil and Tomer alluded to, today we are responding to the professor's hot take. So in his recent... 800k subscriber video that's an insane number by the way congrats professor uh he said that magic cannot be the center or sorry commander cannot be the center of magic the gathering so today we're going to respond to that uh and first uh i'll let you wait wait no first if you want to support us (laughs) make sure to subscribe uh and like on whatever platform you're listening to this so youtube spotify uh, iTunes, etc. And if you want to help us out, head over to Richard's Garage at mtggoldfishmerch.com. Clear out my garage. Um, what there, what still a lot of st- do we I, need I give you to? a photo. Like, yeah. There's a lot of stuff. I can't fit stuff in my garage. I, I keep piling sleeves in different places to make more space. Uh, when are we, we going to do a garage, garage tour? Is that going to be like <laughs> podcast 100 or is a, it a sub a, count? 100K, 100K. subs? Once we once we pass the prof, eight hundred k. We'll we'll get a we'll, we'll, we'll get a we'll, we'll we'll get a thing, a tour of Richard's garage. You hear but, that, Brian? Okay. We're coming for you. So <laughs> yeah, only six hundred thousand to go. Yeah, we're almost we're there. there. How many? Well, the uh, prof actually steps? mapped out how long it would take him to get to a million. He said it'll take one more year. So we have one year to catch up, guys. <laughs> we'll we'll beat Easy. him to a million. Easy. Just, how many just steps to subscribe? Did? How many subs do we need so Toma sends his plans out? No, living. that was some, no, actually <laughs> that's negative fifteen k. Okay, all right, all right. I, it wasn't Wait, no, no, no. We're gonna unsubscribe. What are you guys doing? Stop. And Richard, <laughs> Richard said that he'd get the plan tokens. We all, we all put in our our token ideas. Uh, no, you stop. have to email no, 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 Richard at right, Let's get it over to the prof <laughs> to hear his hot take, and we'll respond. Here's a hot take for this video. Commander cannot stay as the center of Magic the Gathering. It's a great format and one of the most fun ways to play, but it cannot be the only way to play Magic the Gathering. It cannot be the center of this game. It won't work. It won't last. And there's going to be trouble if we don't figure out how to get back to how we were before Commander took over. Hot take! Discuss! Discuss! All right, so those were the prof's words. Hot take? Do you guys agree? What What is your initial gut reaction? We have an interesting cast here. Phil, who started playing Commander this year. Tomer, who <laughs> primarily plays Commander. And then Seth and I, OG 60-card <laughs> format players who've been playing... We've been playing Commander for a long time now, even though it feels yeah. recent. <laughs> I also started with 1v1 formats, by the way. Same. I still play I also did you. Didn't stop <laughs> you, you, you consider yourself a 60-card a player or a 100-card player? No, I'm a 100. Yeah, I'm, I'm primarily a Commander player. That's true. I, don't I mean, think I think it's a hot take. Sorry, go ahead. The, no, go, go ahead, Domer. You got it. I think, I think it... Uh, I think it sh- Commander should be the center of magic, and I think that's good. But I do agree when he says uh, that it's it can't be the only way to play magic. And that's the thing that worries me a lot is I don't like the idea, I, like from a business sense, it doesn't make sense to put all your be- eggs into one uh, basket because if that basket fails then where are you going to go? Your players need to go somewhere else. Because Commander can fail. It's not unfailable. It's a very good, the most resilient format, I would argue. Uh, least least able to fall. But if it does fall, you need to make sure your other formats are healthy so all your all your consumers don't just leave the game, they go to somewhere else to play the game. Do people go from Commander to 60 card? I've only heard the opposite, honestly. Mm-hmm. 
No, but if Commander became bad, like if people stopped enjoying Commander, where will they go? I mean, I think... Probably not (laughs) Mara. I mean, I think I think I agree with what the professor is saying here. Like, I don't know if Commander is sustainable as the center of magic. I definitely agree with it can't be the only way to play. Like, I think that's 100% true, and what Tomer said is very true. But I think that uh, being the center of magic is the thing that's most likely to end up killing Commander with the way Wizards is printing cards and managing the format. I think what made Commander great is it was this community-run format that came out of nowhere and was, like, lurking behind the scenes and then eventually became really popular. But it's it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe I'm just a hipster, but if you ever have a band you like and then they make it and everyone likes them, you have to stop liking them because then they're popular and it's not cool anymore. I think Commander is at risk of, like, having the same thing happen. I don't think it can keep going the way it's going. It doesn't rotate or anything. There's this pressure for wizards to keep topping themselves and printing like more and more busted things. And I think eventually that path leads to Commander not being fun. And then you're to where Tomer was talking about like, where do these people go? If this is all you focus on, and we do get to the point where Commander is not fun and people start dropping off. If that's the only thing going in the game... They're going to go to Hearthstone or going to go to League of Legends or pick some other, you know, hobby rather than Magic. So I 100% agree that it can't be the only format. And I actually think Professor's mostly right that it can't stay the center of Magic. And it needs to be one piece of the puzzle rather than most of the puzzle. Yeah, there's kind of a charm about Commander that it isn't the intended way, or shouldn't be the intended way to play Magic. Because then you feel clever if you make a card oh, that fits great in my ex-commander deck or something. Nowadays, it's often like, oh, play this and then search for six rats in the top four, whatever. Oh, probably not in the top four cards. But like super on the nose here, put this in your commander deck. Like this, I played against this new standard rat in standard and it felt cool, but it's obviously worded for, hey, play this as your commander and play all the cool rats. And nowadays, it's not just all the cool rats, but all the rats reprinted specifically for your red deck. And it, it feels, I don't know, like Commander should be like a room for expression or finding cool cards to play or something. Nowadays, it's all served on a platter. And if they go all in on this, uh, this, yeah, maybe what the prof is saying that it will die Maybe not, but I can't imagine it being healthy for the format. Since it, I mean, it doesn't rotate. If you make a mistake, it's there. And I mean, yeah. So I, I, balance, I wonder. But, I wonder if this is like just old people talking, like boomers. Like Professor's <laughs> been playing Magic forever. Seth agrees. He's played Magic forever. I agree because originally we played Commander as an outlet to enjoy magic after we like try hard and so hard in 60 card formats right like you, you you sit there and like you you play the grand prix you play like 15 hours you're exhausted you're tired of optimizing so then you like bust out your commander deck which has these like mythics that you could not make work in standard that you kind of wanted to but you can't because you're try harding and you actually need to like day two the gp so you play them in commander that doesn't happen anymore right like you cannot play like bad cards anymore like everything is designed for commander you play the commander legends staples that wizards prints for you and you you don't play the leftovers there are no leftovers anymore everything's designed for commander so to me commander's kind of lost its charm uh in that sense that i I can't play my favorite pet cards i'm just trying to find like the most obscure card wizards printed in a commander focused product and make it work but it's not the same as like oh here's a bane slayer or something not good enough for modern so i'll just i'll just put it in my commander deck and poor bane slayer <laughs> well, i remember when that card was like the greatest thing ever and we're like oh bane slayer good in commander <laughs> like, like archangel avison i think like it's- is basically like the poster child for this right like you cannot play that in standard yeah. it's like impossible yep. but it was like the iconic character of the set everyone loved her and then you can make a big splashy angel deck mm-hmm. so I, so i don't know like tomer like you don't primarily play 1v1 how did you utilize commander and has that changed at all in in the recent years um so at the beginning i 
I was I was never like a tournament grinder or anything like that. I played at LGS like long long ago, and my and the group that got me back into the game during original Innistrad, um, it just so happened that that's when the Commander precons came out. So we started all playing standard. I played. I was playing Heartless Summoning. It was very sick. Haven Ghoul Lich Heartless Summoning, uh, <laughs> Perilous Mirror. Yes. I still remember that deck very fondly. <clears throat> Um, and then when Commander came out, we all switched to that, and we had a lot of enjoyment over that. And because all my friends were playing Commander, I switched to that primarily. But so in terms of like this was kind of like an outlet. Commander used to be just like an outlet to take a break from like the more competitive mindset. I think that's kind of a boomer mentality because I feel like a Magic the Gathering would not be as popular as it is right now if they focused on 1v1 competitive and they didn't have Commander front and center. Because if anything has taught me about playing like just any sort of hobby games, casual casual appeal is the most important thing. Casuals are going to dictate whether or not your format, your, your hobby is going to grow or shrink in terms of demand. It really reminds me, for example, I used to play StarCraft 2 a lot. StarCraft 2 is 1v1 primarily and very it's very competitive. It's a very uh, daunting game to get into. It's very challenging and uh, it's, it's, it's very hard to like stick with it because it can feel really bad if you get cheesed out or whatever. You have to just learn how to be perfect at, at many aspects of the game. Um, and weirdly enough, it actually spawned. Uh, StarCraft II became popular and then it just faded off and it shrunk and hardly anyone plays anymore. But the thing that the, its lasting legacy is actually League of Legends. Dota came from it. It was a custom casual map set from StarCraft II. And people preferred playing that Dota thing where you had one champion instead of like you have to do manage macro and, and have like a thousand units. Now you have one unit, very little macroing, and you just focus on that one character. You get attached to that one character. And casuals love that. They loved it so much, it spawned real games. Dota and then eventually League of Legends. And League of Legends is one of the largest games right now. And the reason why that's more popular Popular than StarCraft 2, which originated it, is because 1v1 competitive is just inherently competitive focus, and competitive focus are always going to be like 1% of your player base. You really need to capture the casuals, and that's what Commander does. And that's the reason why Magic is so popular right now. But uh, is Commander really... Uh, is it a really effective way to onboard these casuals and new players? Like, I think there's a real question there with... In the current era, with how many cards are printed for it and how many sets are printed for Commander and how many words are on those cards, I, I was at GP Philly, I guess, last weekend when this podcast goes up, and I was talking to someone who we played a game, and they said that they had just started playing six months ago, and I was curious, because I want to know, like, how hard was it for you to get into this format? So I asked them, like, how was your experience as someone, you know, six months into playing Magic, period? They didn't come from another format. This was their first experience, and they said, honestly, it was really really hard there's a lot of sets in a lot of cards and it's real it was very difficult for me to parse through all of that and get into the format i really enjoy playing it but there's just so much that i'm being bombarded with that that was a big challenge for me to pick this up as my first experience with magic so to me that kind of ties back into like the popularity of commander eventually becoming a bad thing like the bigness of it and how much wizards is pushing it like could it get so big that it kind of folds in on itself and collapses because it just overwhelms these people who we want to be able to bring the casuals and new players into this format so they can experience because it is great for that. But I feel like we're moving further and further away from that being easy for a new player to do in the current era with just how cards are printed and how many of them are printed. God, you guys use the C word. I hate the C word, which is casual. Like, what does casual <laughs> even mean? Because I, I feel we use casual in a way that makes zero sense, right? Like, if you are looking, if you're listening to a podcast about your hobby, is that really casual? If you're going on EDH rec and, like, looking at card lists and, like, looking <clears throat> at spoilers, is that really casual? Like, I casually play tennis, i.e. once a year I go to the tennis court and hit the ball and try to like hit it, <laughs> right? I don't go home and like, you know, practice. I don't take lessons. I don't watch YouTube videos. Like to me, like that's casual, right? I feel for Commander, we spend like so many hours 
like consuming magic content and then like just tuning down our decks so that we're casual and like try to have fun but not really we're trying to actually slam our opponents but making it look like we're not tryharding like it's like this weird thing that's going on and i feel if you play different formats you might actually take that to heart right like if i want to like body someone in magic i go play standard or modern or something and then when i play commander i do whatever the heck i want but if you only play commander like, are you really okay with, like, losing everything and, like, you know, not playing strong cards? Or will you try to do it? And will you start reading some articles and podcasts to try to get an edge on your opponents? And are you really casual at that point? And so I, I don't know what casual really means when we say casual. And I feel the RC struggles with this as well, right? They're like, oh, at casual tables, Dockside is not strong. You know, like, what, like, yeah. what, what does this even mean? <laughs> what is a casual table? And are we casual if we're reading about RC updates on the internet. So, so I, I find that casual is more of what, what, whatever the format or game is trying to project. What, what, is it, what type of player is it trying to grab onto? Not whether or not people play it casually or not. For example, League of Legends, again, I would say is a more casual, ver- is a more casual of a game compared to something, or even Fortnite is more ca- casual than something than StarCraft, where the uh, onboarding of it is really, really more uh, available to people. Not that you can't play competitively. You do play it competitively. You play at a very high level and there's I- insanity at, at the higher levels. But the fact that like, you know, uh, like some like 12 year old kid could just like pop into Fortnite and play some games, maybe unranked or something, be matched with people who are also beginners. And, you know, like it's the, the, the basics of it is more easily understood than the basics of Starcraft. And I see that as, as how Commander is compared to other formats people like starting in a multiplayer format where you know it's not it's not so much 100 percent on them if they win or lose there's less of that 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 angst about you know like uh you know all all my decision making all, all the results are all on me you know you can kind of diffuse it a little bit throughout the rest of the table like hard luck or you know somebody popped up harder or whatever and you can also latch on to this one legendary creature that you really like. Like, there's a lot of casual aspects to Commander that you don't see in the other formats. And whether or not you play it hardcore or not is is a totally different question. But it's more onboarding to casual people. Yeah, so that is, first of all, we have somebody screaming in the comments. Pretty sure that Dota came from a Warcraft 3. Oh, yeah, so, Warcraft uh, 3. Same just, thing, though. Just, <laughs> and ironically, <laughs> but League of Legends like is the, the most casual, unfriendly game. In exi- you cannot play the game. <laughs> but I like the idea what of... You're doing. <laughs> like, before you played a whole army, and now you focus on one hero. That is actually a pretty good analogy for Commander. Funnily enough, mm-hmm. uh, Commander, as well as League of Legends, or Dota, became very much not casual very quickly. Although the definition of casual is also kind of interesting there. But what I wanted to say is, uh, yeah, so in Commander, you are like 25% chance to win. And I would say in Commander, it's not, yeah, you want to win at some point, but maybe that's what it, it means to be casual in Commander. You're more trying to do cool things or do what your deck is trying to do, which might not be winning like uh, some people hate it but i just love drawing a lot of cards or creating huge board states that leads to winning but Mm -hmm. i prefer this over like oh that's this oracle here i won that was my point so uh i feel like commander allows to get winning out of the picture and sometimes you just lose and you couldn't do anything about it but it doesn't matter because everybody had fun like Competitive like to one v one magic is super focused on winning against your opponent. That's the only thing you do. Maybe that's why it's in one v one. You never you're never like I'm gonna let my opponent pop off because I want to oh, yeah. see his cool thing. <laughs> Whereas in Commander, that actually does happen. You're just like, yeah, I want to see him do go off, go off, Phil. You know, have yes. some fun. Whereas in one v one, you're like, no, it's, it's not happening. Yeah. And, and even like Is when it, you're trying to do the cool thing, you're, you, I know Phil has been complaining a lot where like my opponents keep quitting before I get to do the cool thing and I'm trying to record it for, oh, yeah, for a video. <laughs> like, but in Commander, so, people so, are like, yeah, do your cool thing. You're in there. So Good the job. professor said we should get magic back to the way it was, which means yes. standard is the premier format. 
isn't standard way easier to get into than commander because you can play on magic arena it's free it's free to play yeah. you can start playing right uh but the card pool is very limited can you imagine sitting down with four decks hundred card singleton decks Mm-hmm. With 30 years of magic history, yeah. let alone all the stupid special versions and textless promos and Phyrexian whatevers, like, isn't that way more challenging than just playing standard? There's like, I don't know, 20 staples that you'll see. And once you see those, you kind of know everything. There's like three mechanics you need to know on top of the base rules. Like, isn't it just way easier to get to standard than it is commander? Oh, definitely. Like, it's way easier. Like, it's not even... Commander's got to be the worst format for a new person. For Not only do you have all those instances, but it's also the format of a million unwritten rules that you'll have no way of knowing about until you play the game for, like, ten years. Like, it, like that's one of the big challenges I see with having Commander be the center of magic is, like, in standard... Here's the cards. They're legal. They're not legal. You try to win with those cards. There's no one that's going to shame you or get salty because you played a card that's legal in the format. There's no one that's going to, you're going to sit down to play your game and present your legal deck and be like, no, you can't play that. I don't want to play against Mill. I don't like Armageddon. I don't like, like, we see it on Moto all the time. No, that, no counter spells. No, this, no, that, no, that, no, that. Like, how can a new player how do you do that? How do you how do you even learn all those unwritten rules? To me, it seems like standard is a million times easier if you're trying to learn the game because you don't have to deal with all that extra baggage. So I totally agree with all those points. I don't think Commander is a good format for onboarding, but I do think it's still much better and should be focused on as a center uh, central format until Wizards of the Coast has a better idea. Because I think the problem is that casuals want to play commander over these other options. Like you can just you can just grab some people and play standard at somebody's house. So you, you have the power to do that. Nobody is stopping you from doing that. But people aren't doing that. People are saying, hey, let's have commander night. So you have to follow where people are actually wanting to play the game. And if people are wanting to play commander because this is the format of multiplayer, so it's four people sitting down at a table together, playing together as opposed to 1v1, and people like the fact that they're building around their commanders, and they like the fact that it's battle cruiser magic and stuff like that. Like if you're saying, well, this is not as good for onboarding people, it doesn't matter because those people could be playing standard and it's a totally, it's, it's there, but nobody does it. And I think the better but, solution. But Tomer, sorry. What, what if people are dumb and you need to stop them? Here, okay, what, here's no. this analogy. What, what if Commander is dessert and Standard is like your dinner, your, your steak and potatoes, right? Sure. Like everyone loves dessert. You're like, yeah, that's the best part of the night. But if you only ate dessert, it would be bad, <laughs> right? So and you got to eat your meat and potatoes to be so, a healthy a healthy magic player and then you can have some dessert even though dessert is the highlight like is that what we're not trying to say like focus on standard and then play commander even though commander is the best part but if you play too much commander it's bad so so if a bunch of if a bunch of people come together and they're like we want to play magic this weekend and everybody says we want to play commander you want to come in slap the commander decks out of their hand they're like no (laughs) you play standard Standard is healthier for you. And then, you, and then the they're like, you could play one commander game if you finish your standard tournament. <laughs> is that what you want, Richard? Okay, okay, okay. So, so why, why would we say this, right? Because commander is non-rotating, right? It doesn't rotate. The only way to make new cards, which Wizards of the Coast wants to make, is to somehow find new design space, which is very difficult given 30 years of Magic the Gathering, or power creep, right? Power creep is one of the... The biggest complaints about Commander that because you're just printing cards for this non-rotating format, the only way to get new cards in is the power creep. Do you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. Uh, Other people pointed to maybe it's not power creep, it's just EDH rec. Like we have access to information. Or maybe magic players are smarter now. Like we know how to optimize our decks and it's it's none of these things. It's just we're better at deck building and therefore our decks are more powerful. Like what do you think about this this power level unsustainable? Pretty, if you print new cards, sure that, things will be power yeah. crap. Even if you're not trying to, but Wizard is trying to. Well, yeah. that's, that's, that's not true. Because well, no, for, that's not... for like 15, 20 years, because standard, you could print a new card, it rotates out. And then you yeah. reset the power level every standard, right? They were able to print without 
crazily power creeping. But for the longest time, the most powerful cards were the old cards, right? The cards printed in 93, 94. So you, you can go like 20, 30 years without like significant power creep. I, I think I'll that's... That. Oh, go ahead, Phil. So, I mean, they got a power creep. And I think the solution to this is design for standard, uh, which they did back in the day before power creep was a thing. But then they designed for modern. And now they designed whole sets for modern, which power crept everything out of the game. <laughs> What's funny is that somebody at Magic around Dominaria release back in the day had the same discussion as we had and came to the conclusion that we need standard is easier than commander and it needs to rotate, but we want multiple multiplayer because that's what people want to do. And then they came up with Brawl. I mean, that's obviously mm -hmm. how they... I was going to say that. would be fixed. But is it Brawl yeah, it's, 1v1 it's rotating. <laughs> No, it's four so, player. We no, played it on Commander Clash. Yeah, it's multiplayer. It's only 60 cards. Yes. It's just the standard card pool. You still can latch on to a legend, but it rotates. It's not I overpowered. You know the whole format. And nobody can. <laughs> because That's the problem. Is the commander was honestly. too fun. But I, I think that, like, I was poo-pooing Brawl too. Is like, who, who asked for this? But in hindsight, oh, I like now, I think it actually solves all the issues that commander yeah, is currently having good. and will currently have. I think the problem is, like, I would say, I would be like, bring Brawl back, try it again, because it's kind of necessary. But the problem is that it, it failed so spectacularly that you really can't. I think you have to bring back Brawl, but you have to package it in a different way and try again. You need a you need rotating there's... commander. You just do. You need rotating commander. Or else, it's just, yeah, the format will continue to suffer. But, but the problem is, like, the reason people like playing commander is you get to play... 30 years of whatever cards you want. I don't know if there's that yeah. much appeal. Do you think there's actually appeal to like Commander but only a year's worth of cards? That doesn't no. sound that appealing to me. But do you actually get to play 30 years of cards? It's it's like You don't, yeah. It's like it's, so, vintage, right? You can yeah. theoretically play the whole card pool, but in reality, there's like this list of like 100 cards you can play, right? Like What what Wizards of the Coast kind of did is when Brawl failed, they're like, "All right, we're going to make Commander rotating." And that's how it really feels now. There's so many new cards that are coming out, and most of your Commander options are just going to be power crept out. Like, "Oh, you're playing an Enchantress deck. Well, uh, we're going to make Tuvasa, and now Tuvasa is better than your other Enchantress." And then a couple years later, well, let's make Sithis now. Oh, you wanted to play Auras? You wanted to mix it up again? We'll make Light Paws. You know, and and it, you could keep playing the older cards, but you're not gonna you're not gonna keep up with the rest of the table who are buying these newer cards. So they kind of pseudo made uh, Commander uh, rotate just by power creep. Isn't that a isn't that a concern? Like Commander has only been focused on for a handful of years. Like. Can that keep happening for 10 years and the format being successful for 30 years in the format being successful? I don't I don't think so. Like, I think it's OK now. But like, how do you keep doing that? I, we've had this same concern with modern. Like you printed Raghavan, you printed Modern Horizons 2 with all these really busted cards. How do you make Modern Horizons 3? Like you have to top those cards because they exist or else you have to print a set that no one cares about because it's worse than the cards that already exist. That's kind of like the the problem with the power creep model. And I feel like Commander is getting uh, like that, but like it's way worse. It's on steroids because every single set is doing this for Commander. Like it's not like we get a Modern Horizons every couple of years and have to deal with it. Every set is dumping all these like really push cards focus on Commander into the format. So Commander is dealing with that every couple of months. Like it's just like spiraling so quickly out of control. And I don't know how long that train stays on the tracks before it, you know, something goes wrong. So I think the thing with Commander is that it's the most the, and the reason why I think it should be the center of magic right now until they have a better idea is that it can it can take the most mistakes possible and still keep trucking along like standard for example did not survive through uh the oko era the throne of eldrin era the fire design as it were that plus like the pandemic and everything really just hit on standard really hard there was mass bannings and even mass bannings are not not a not a good solution because even if you ban stuff people are already like lost interest in the format and that that's really hard to regain whereas in commander you could print a lot of mistakes 
You print Hellbreacher, you print Jeweled Lotus, you print the next must-buy lands. I don't know. I don't care. Like, you have Mana Crypt running around. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like, people, if, if it's an, if it's an issue, either it's going to be priced out of most people's, uh, decks, or people are just going to rule zero. And the fact that it's like, Commander is such a large format, and rule zero is such a, like, strong stopgap in terms of, uh, just like what people are and not going to run it means wizards of the coast can get away with making a lot of like stupid mistakes or intentional mistakes like jeweled lotus just to sell product and it won't actually destroy the format itself i think it's like a little chipping away and i think eventually we're going to reach a tipping point where too many people are going to be like we're tired of, of commander and people will move away but that's why i think it's more resilient than like standard for example if you screw up standard standard is dead <laughs> but like we've seen that but like if you screw up commander how do you screw up commander you have to you have to screw it up a lot you have to do a lot of damage to it but if you screw so, up standard it'll rotate and you get another shot at yeah. it but, yeah but, you know, but the ahead. reputation hit right yeah um, yeah but so phil any merit to things like edh rec killed commander like <laughs> it's no longer brewer's paradise you just go on edh track you just put in like the 50 synergy cards and then you're done and there's nothing hidden in the format anymore so it's not actually wizards printing powerful cards it's we're actually able to build coherent decks due to like resources like edh track to a point but i you can't deny that ragavan is way stronger than savannah lion <laughs> but I do feel like uh, EDA track takes a little bit of the fun out of it, although I use it a lot, obviously. But whenever I build a deck with mostly Scryfall, when we build like uh, theme decks or something, it feels way better to come up with a individual pile of cards and not like just the most, not like we do this, but there's a lot of commanders where you can just click on generate like the default deck and it's pretty playable because that's how crowds work when they all get to decide what to do um it feels pretty good to find a card that edh rec hasn't found so there's probably i don't don't feel it that edh rec adds fun but it's it's like saying mtg goldfish ruined standard because we published so many decks like i mean maybe but we that's just yeah, how it is sure. i don't know i think stop yeah, posting the meta game i win percentages yeah, you can't stop people from talking about their decks and edh track just arranges it pretty neatly and you can see what people play i mean you know the- i feel i did ruin standard by the way <laughs> <laughs> how dare you really i think go i, I, I okay, ruin okay. standard. Take a little aside here so the reason why we're talking about this, right, is because standard is dead. What, what happened to standard? And it, it seems to coincide with one, what Tomer mentioned, like the Oko era, where there was just like mass bannings after mass bannings. Uh, but the rise of Arena, right? And essentially like five days after a set re- is released, the metagame is solved. Like data moves too quickly. And... You have concrete data and, like, you have tournament results. Like, no one's speculating what the best cards are. And, like, even if you use something, like, untapped, you you literally know what's going on at the ladder, at any segment of the ladder, at any time. So you can actually have, like, up to the hour real-time metagame info. Whereas, even though you have EDH rec with Commander, it's just people submitting lists, right? You have no idea what people are playing locally. You have no idea who's winning, Right, just because a list is very popular doesn't mean it's winning. Like you don't know who's winning, you don't know what's good. It's kind of like obscure, and it's it's a bit of a brewer's paradise still. Even though all the decks are there, like you don't know how people are playing, you don't know what's going on. Whereas standard, like everything is so known, and I think it does take away from standard. Um, and you know, I, I think so. I think in that sense, we have ruined standard. Uh, so MTG Goldfish is a part of that, right? But like, you know, Moto deckless dumps, like untapped, melee, uh, arena, you know, releasing before paper. So like the metagame is solved before you get your paper cards, right? So I, I do think those are somewhat related. And I do think ED, EDH Rec does take something away from Commander, but I, I, I think the printing of cards like far 
is more important than whatever EDH rec <laughs> like contributes to that, right? Like, yes, I mean, it's I think not EDH a genius to see Ragavan is better than Savannah Lions, right? You don't need EDH yeah. rec or MTG Goldfish to tell you that, right? I think EDH rec is totally fine. Well, like, most of it, is, if it you is just is take a random... Like, also, I want to also make sure that, like, because we're all brewers at heart. I think we all enjoy the aspect of brewers. I mean, it's a, Phil, your, your thing is Brewer's Kitchen, so it's even in the name. The Seth like makes against the odds. I do budget commander weekly. Like we all, we all love brewing, and that's like a, a big joy of magic to us. But that's not for everybody. Like sometimes people just like I want to have this commander deck. I don't have time or the desire to come up with my own deck. Somebody give me a list. Like I fill that niche for like a decade now. I've been doing budget commander for that for those those specific people and i think edh rec providing that as well is a good thing actually like you don't like if you just want to play commander and you don't want to deal with the brewing aspect which could be very daunting or you just want like a launching off point then it's good to have a site that that gives you that launching off point and if you just grab an edh rec uh deck like it's not even guaranteed to be good like i have like a uh, shout out Authari is coming out this week budget Authari. and if you look on edh rec they're like oh yes run all these terrible rebels because your bird phoenix cares about rebels so all the creatures that they recommend are just like the crappy mercadian masks rebels that pay like pay five mana to get a four mana rebel that can pay three mana to put a four ma- a three mana rebel and that's that's trash don't do no no don't do that so if you take that, if you take the Lothario list, you're going to have a bad deck. And then I show you how to make a good one. But it's still nice to go to EDH Rec and see if maybe there's a cool card that you actually miss. So I don't know. It's it's a nice assistant. Uh, but it's not like EDH Rec is giving you like, here's the most optimized brew or anything. Blaming the data is, is super silly. Like, I, I'm sure maybe EDH Rec is 1% of the whatever that's going on. Like, I'm sure it contributes to some extent, but I always hate the, like, blame the data argument. I think EDH Rec kind of disproves that argument itself. If you look at the, the most played commanders, there's, like, two, I believe, out of the top 100 that were printed before the commander era when Wizards started designing cards specifically for the commander format. That has nothing to do with EDH rec suggestions. That's just how, what decks people are building. The new cards are just way better than the older cards. Like that's, that's the heart of the matter. The power creep. It's not, I think that EDH rex contributions is minimal if at all. And it's really wizards just keeps power creeping. I also, we've said a few times like, Oh, standards dying, standards dying. Sure. But like the reason for that is I think more complicated than we've gotten into. It's what Wizards is choosing to support. We keep saying, oh, like, everyone's playing Commander because Standard is bad. Well, maybe everyone's playing Commander because that's what Wizards decided to support. They decided to try to make Standard into Commander by printing Companions and then printing Endless Legends and doing all this stuff that's actively harmful to the format while actively pushing Commander. If we could still go to GPs every weekend and play Standard, a lot more people would play Standard, but we can't. We go to Command Fest and play Commander because that's the offering that Wizards gives us. So I think there's at least some amount of chicken and egg going on here where I don't think it's as straightforward as like, oh, standard is bad and commander is great. I think it's like Wizards is dumping hundreds of millions of dollars into commander and basically completely stops supporting standard so you don't even have a place to play other formats if you want to. Well, that's a hot take in itself, Seth. I don't know. So so you were at MagicCon, right? There are standard events. You can sign up for standard events. It's just no one built a standard deck and brought it right because they don't want to build a standard deck they want to build a commander deck so you know i, I feel if people are like i need paper standard and they were actually willing to put their money behind it wizards would, would accommodate right they're not going to throw away free money but it's just everyone's choosing to play commander and then wizards like okay we'll just make more commander room and like that's just how it goes and I think it's part of the Oko era. Like, I, like standard has been the best it's been in years, and no one can appreciate it because we're all too busy looking at like commander spoilers or something, right? Like, no one knows how good standard is because they don't play it and they don't bother, right? Or maybe they do play, but just on arena, and they don't bother building a deck because they know it's going to rotate and it costs too much money. Maybe it's other factors like that. I think so. I, I, my argument, I, 
I would say that even before Commander was a thing, like if GP, if GP and like imagine, imagine Commander doesn't exist, and the the go to place to like play organized organized games uh, is GPs, and everybody's competitive and everything. Do you think there would be as many people signing up for like one v one constructed tournaments as there are people who are signing up for their LGS Commander night? Like if the Commander did not exist. Do you think there would be as many people signing up for like like as many butts in the seat, as much demand for people playing Commander as there is demand for people like playing Standard and, and stuff like that? Oh, like I mean, I think I think the Commander has definitely brought people into the game. I, I don't want to diminish the the positive impact of Commander. So I think that, yes, there's certainly people that are at LGS is playing because Commander is what they want to play. So I don't want to diminish that. But I also think that Wizards has really not focused on Standard at all and has focused very heavily on Commander. It's kind of like if you, I don't know, spend hundreds of millions of dollars advertising a movie compared to not advertising at all, are you really going to be surprised when the movie that, you know, the next X-Men that had a $200 million advertising budget outperformed some indie film that no one's ever heard of? No, of course not, because because that's what's being pushed. And I feel like that's the era we're in where Commander is, like, super heavily pushed in the other formats. If anything, maybe it's an argument for going back to the top for supporting those other formats as well because i feel like if anything's missing the problem's probably not that wizard's supporting commander because there are a lot of people that love commander and it's a great format but it's that they've supported commander at the exclusion of every other format from my perspective like they haven't supported the other formats enough like it doesn't have to be a choose it doesn't have to be a choose one like you can support commander heavily and also like support standard and support other formats as well and i feel like that might be the part that's missing i think they're going to screw up commander eventually and i definitely agree with that that you need to make sure that the other formats are healthy so that when you do irreparably harm commander you have somewhere for those consumers to go i hate saying consumers instead of players but like that's like hazardous perspective you know but on on a scale of zero to a hundred how screwed up this commander currently? So, so, so Tomer is dreading when we get to 100, it's like over. That's when it breaks, right? Yeah. Where, where do you think we are on that scale? So we're halfway there. I'm like five out of ten. Like we still have, we still have like a good like five years before anybody's gonna really <laughs> raise alarms. Hmm. I mean, we play Commander every week with different decks, and I still have. Mm-hmm. A lot of fun. And in paper, oh my, do I have fun. So I would probably say maybe also 5 out of 10 or 50 out of 100. But I didn't play in the golden age of Commander. Uh, hmm. I did play Paper Magic, like Stand Up. Hmm. I, I think 50 might be about right. My concern is how fast I feel like we're moving up that chart. Because if you asked me this, like, uh, three years ago or something, it would probably be one or one. Like, it would be very, very low. I feel like we've really shot up a lot in just the last couple of years with card designs and how the format's been pushed and how it's being monetized. So it's not so much the absolute number that we're at right now, but just, like, how quickly I feel like we went from, like, no concern about Commander to, like, the medium concern about Commander. That is uh, is scary for me. Oh, I, I wish we had the professor here because I I think it's actually like a seven or an eight, and I, and I feel he thinks wow. it's closer to that than like a five. Like we are at the wow. point where I can build a commander deck in two minutes because I just take all my staples and then like switch the theme of the deck. Like we have so many staples now. And we're also at the point where I do not buy any cards during preview season or when the set releases, right? Because uh, let's say I want to play in Magic Fest Vegas this year, which is in September. I will not buy any cards until like the month before, because who knows whatever new Teferi's protection they're going to print in like March of the Machines, right? Like they're they're going to power creep all my white cards, so I am not going to pre-buy them and wait a year from now to play. Spirit them. of Companion draws so, two cards now. <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> Like, just think of, like, all the white card draw we got over the last year, all the new board wipes. Like, think of all the stuff they've power crept. 
So it makes no sense for me to be like, oh, here's a $15 card that got reprinted. Let me buy it because I might need it this year. I'm like, well, A, it might come in a secret layer. They might reprint it or they might just power creep it. So I think we're at the point, we're, we're kind of at the breaking point, right? And my question is, how many commander decks can we all have? They keep making new cards. There's like mm-hmm. a new like set of like 50 legendaries every set that comes out. Like, how many commander decks can you possibly build? Like, we are content creators, so we, we just build decks nonstop, right? But if you're a normal person, like, how many $100 decks can you can you keep in your backpack, right? And I mean, I've... I've gotten to the point in paper where I have like six decks maybe now, and that's more than I ever need. Like I went to Magic mm-hmm. Con Philly, and I think I played like three of them throughout the entire weekend of mostly jam- jam- jamming games the whole time. Uh, so, so it's not that many. I like I'm already at the point where I just tear apart decks to build other decks because you don't need that many. And I think yeah. from Wizards' perspective, isn't that a problem eventually? Like if people either get burnt out like you're talking about and are afraid to buy the new cards because there's going to be a better new card the next set or like just stop buying into the format because it gets so expensive isn't that something that could <clears throat> make commander start to fizzle i also wonder if proxies play into this like commander is the format of proxy acceptance from wizard's perspective if proxies keep growing doesn't commander become less profitable for them because even if you do print a teferi's protection a big chunk of people are just going to be like well, i'm not spending you know 60 bucks on that i'm just going to make a proxy of it and then that diminishes wizard's Profits and desire to support the format is heavily. Eh, Wait, there's enough whales. one question. Do we talk about like <clears throat> if somebody has nine commander decks, that really ups the chance of them keeping playing commander? Maybe they don't buy new cards. So is the is commander dying? People not buying the new cards because I. They have too many decks. I don't think they just say, oh, and now I stop completely now that I invest thousands of dollars into this. So well, it might maybe be bad. Maybe for... you wake up and you're like, why am I spending thousands of dollars on pieces of cardboard? <laughs> what am I doing <laughs> with my life? And then you, you yeah. have a change of heart, which is what I think yeah, happened to standard think that's players. How magic works. Right? After like Oko was banned and then whatever that was banned, and you had to like rotate your paper standard deck like four <clears> times. <throat> People were like, why am I bothering with this? I'll just oh, yeah. play digitally, right? Or I, I will just play modern, and I don't have to oh, deal with this. Enough. Jokes on them, Modern Horizons was coming. There. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, the, the real answer is I'll play Commander. <clears throat> where I can play my jank deck. The power level is evened out because it's four players, and it doesn't rotate, right? And yeah. I, I think that constant rotation just got people into Commander. But now Commander is starting to soft rotate frequently right now what do you do where do you go there's no place left right so you either sell out of the game or you know you become super casual you don't buy anything you just play your one deck forever or you go proxies like that i think that's part of the sustainability problem right like there's nowhere to go once commander loses its charm because you you, you sure is not gonna go play like more standard right yeah. if you yeah. got out of standard to play commander to begin with that I might be say, uh, yeah. The problem in general that people don't go from commander to 60 card but they do go from 60 card to commander so it maybe it doesn't even matter if wizard supports it maybe the just the natural progression is we all play commander and even if we don't want to admit that it's the most prevalent format it will just be because people don't go back to like now that I'm done with playing Commander because it got power crept, I'm gonna spend two thousand bucks on a modern deck. <laughs> like that I mean, doesn't. There's gotta be people that go from Commander to sixty card formats. I think there's gotta I... be. There's sure. there's gotta be like people who are sure. casual that start playing Commander and then they like decide they want something that's more competitive and like yeah. has tournaments and all that kind of stuff and. What are your options? You either go like CDH, I guess, if you want to stay in Commander, which is also very expensive, or you'd start playing 60 card format. So I, I there's got to be, I don't know how many there are, but I think there's got to be some people that go that direction. Well, CDH is cheap because like the entire community just accepts proxies host, wholesale. So you just you just print out your deck. But I also I also agree that there is going to be some people moving towards like competitive formats, but. I, I do think the answer is going to be like eventually Commander gets too bloated and people get fed up and we're going to splinter off to a new <clears> version <throat> of Commander 
that is just like less card pool, smaller, you know, more manageable. What would that even be? So the, I was going to say brawl, but it's ro- rotating. But the, but the traditional <laughs> way is you split it off on time. But if pioneer you commander, check, exactly right. You would go pioneer, or like say standard yeah. is too small. So you go pioneer, you go modern. Except yeah. like seventy five percent of the cards in commander's existence was printed in the last like two years. So <laughs> what you're really yeah. doing is just cutting off Gaia's Cradle or something, and then like every other <laughs> like new card is wow. in the format, which is what we're seeing anyway, right? So how how could we, we lose use Sol that Ring finally? Format? Finally, Seth and I can be free of the Sol Ring. I, I'm not hopeful that a pseudo commander with a smaller card pool would be successful. Like, mm. uh, we've seen a lot of like sort of commander formats that people have tried to create since Commander. Thinking of like tiny leaders. So what was the Planeswalker one that we yeah. played a few times? Oathbreaker. Like, Oathbreaker. people love trying to make these. Like, hey, I'm going to make the next commander and. Yeah none of them have caught on like some of them catch on for a few months and people play them but then none of them have had longevity that's because commander's not bad enough yet it has like personally i I, i'm I'm not with richard i don't think it's like an eight out of ten out of horribleness like i said i get excited every single week to play commander with you guys and i have two play groups two personal play groups that i have fun with and like every single time i was at a different lgs before having fun so I still think Commander is in a really good spot, but it's definitely the direction it's going is is worrisome. Um, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Speaking of playgroups, <clears throat> I have a question for you about playgroups. Is that a barrier for people getting into the format? So I think Commander is at its best when you have a Commander Clash playgroup, because I always have fun every week when we get to play, or when you have a group of IRL friends that you get together with and have some drinks and play a Commander game every week, like, that is peak Commander, and some Mm. of the most fun you'll have playing Magic. What if you don't have that? You don't have a group of friends who is playing Commander that you can join. How do you get that experience? You're a brand new player, you don't have a playgroup, with a 60-card format, you go to your LGS and sign up for a tournament, and they'll pair you against someone, and you get to play Magic for so many rounds. How does a new player uh, get that play group that makes Commander so awesome? Like, what do you do if you're that person? RNG, I guess. Don't go. Just, yes. like, go to your LGS and cross your fingers and hope that it's, like, works out, basically? Yeah, if it's bad, don't go again, I guess. Like, I, I don't know if I would be playing Commander if I didn't have regular play groups personally it seems like that's a challenge for getting new players into the format compared to other formats i think because you just commander is such a bad tournament format that it doesn't really work to like run tournaments for it that you sign up for and are guaranteed to play against opponents or whatever so to me that seems like a, a challenge so 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 what's interesting is magic players are famous for being um Maybe a bit socially inept, right? Maybe we're not very well socialized, and we, we're kind of like the outcasts, and we, we play 1v1, and it's cool, but now we're thrust in this social setting. Maybe you don't like playing with strangers, right? Maybe you don't like the group you're playing with. Um, I, I find the friends <coughs> thing weird. So if you have a group of friends, you can do whatever you want with them. They're your friends, right? So you, yeah. it's, it's not like that hard to figure out something fun to do with your friends because they're your friends. Uh, it's like playing with strangers, and and can you have fun playing with strangers? And I think a thing that people don't talk about is kind of the the social anxiety of playing with random people. I know I know Tomer's brought this up, but like when you have power level discussions, people might just be like, "Oh, it's fine," because they don't want to bring any conflict. They don't want to be like, "Oh, you know, I, I hate stacks. Don't play stacks. I don't want to uh, bring a conflict into this." Or um, maybe. I just don't like talking to people, but I'm fine playing games, right? Like, you know, you can play League of Legends at home and never talk to anyone. Or you can be really chatty and talk the whole way through with your, you know, bot lane partner or whatever, right? But Commander, you can't really do that. You kind of have to engage in the group talk. Uh, Whereas 1v1, you can just be all business. Uh, So, you know, part of the boon is the social aspect. People are social animals, but also... There are plenty of people that are not social. And I wonder like how Commander is for them. Like even going to a Magic Fest and finding a, a, a free play group could be very hard, right? If you're not someone willing to walk around and talk to strangers, right? So Yeah, like that's I can't imagine like for a beginner if they just bought a 
precon and maybe some cards they found in boosters even if they have the guts if they are anxious or something to just ask people in the lgs if they can play with them the power level is gonna be not compatible i mean it's better there than in 60 card formats although uh no actually yeah it is probably better because it's still just 25 percent win win percentage or whatever but it, it must be weird if you don't know these people and then you get beaten up by cards that you all have to read which kind of sucks if they like the table plays something and everybody says oh whoa, this happened and you have to go what does this do oh okay this happened i i i, I can't it doesn't seem like commander is too friendly for beginners now that i think about it for beginners it's it's it might be limited maybe just the pre-release is the best onboarding because that's super fair mm. uh you still have to know how to play magic but yeah sealed. maybe yeah, pre -release limited is sealed pretty is well like pretty just sealed. as close as it gets because like you don't have to worry about drafting you don't have to worry about like you know uh how to how to pilot this tuned list or whatever you know you just kind of take take all the rares put them all together and it's also like one set's worth of mechanics so it's as as little of complexity as possible and as few as cards as possible it's only 40 you know like it's good it's really good all I right think. i just got a text from the ceo <laughs> of wizards okay well, name i don't know well. <laughs> <laughs> they were so impressed by a great designer search <laughs> they, they, they said we're so knowledgeable that they have asked us to fix <clears throat> Magic the Gathering. Wow. <laughs> so you will be instilled as interim CEO and you will make Magic sustainable. What would you do? And ask for a raise. I... <laughs> ask for a raise. That's a good one. Um, oh. <laughs> you get raises I... all the time. <laughs> well, as, my, as my, my salary of, goes of from Hasbro. zero to zero. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I I would go back to printing standard sets. I I think that uh, I think that you can make this last a lot longer if every set isn't primarily designed for commander. Mm -hmm. I think you go back to making standard sets that are primarily designed for standard. Although those sets will still obviously have cards just like commander always existed that will be good in commander that end up working well in a multiplayer format and then you still have commander precons you still have commander legends you still have all that stuff to support the commander format and then i think you boost 60 card format so there's a viable alternative if we get to the point where people want to do something other than commander which is one of magic's biggest upsides when standard sucks you can play modern when modern is horrible you can play pioneer uh, when pioneer is horrible you can play commander so that would support the 60 card formats and i think it would it's not going to stop the power creep. They're still going to need to print cards that are more exciting than the last cards that people are going to want to buy for Commander Precons and for Commander Legends and stuff. But it's going to minimize that, at least, because rather than happening 10 times a year or whatever it is now, it's going to be happening with some Precons and maybe one supplemental set that's focused on Commander instead of every single set. So I think that would be that would be the first thing I would do. Shift the Premier sets back to focusing primarily on 60-card formats and then support Commander through Precons and supplemental products and maybe a little bit on the fringes of the, the standard sets like we used to five years ago, 10 years ago, or whatever. I would take all my money. 90% of my monies. I would take 90% of my monies. And I'd go and I'd say, hey, the people who made Arcane for League of Legends, hey, make us Arcane for Magic the Gathering. And then I'll, I'd quietly go to the Magic Arena team and I'd take the other like 5%. And I'd be like, hey, make onboarding for new players. Like put the tutorial, make the tutorial freaking awesome. Make all like the reward systems awesome. Make it like, make make all the improvements that we want for new players. And then I'd make like standard then I take the other five percent, and I'd be like, for design, for Watsu design, I'd be like, here you go, here's five percent, and uh, fix standard and do what what Seth said. Basically, standard cards are for standard. The standard set is for standard. Set boosters and stuff or whatever for commander. Commander pre are for commander, but standard cards, the standard set is for standard, and focus on that for standard. Make standard good, and then like push draft and push uh, limited and push standard, and then try to fix modern and stuff i guess but yeah most of it is netflix make make us make us a tv show like arcane 
for for magic and make it good. Don't don't cheap out on that crap. No 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 no. no. Tell me. But- Toma wouldn't need to put his resources in Arena because that's what I would do. I'm just watching Arcane, by the way, and yes, it is amazing, and Wizard's Show will be... Oh boy, but if I... I mean, it is kind of off topic here, but I feel like they're really, really missing the point with Arena. So if I would have a lot of monies and have to pull uh, magic out of the hole... I would probably go back to two block, uh, two set blocks, and integrate the story of the new block in a campaign on Arena where you play, I don't know, against the villain and you get like the card of the villain. Yeah, you, know, like, you have, whenever a new set comes out, there's a whole theme with a single player campaign that's super easy for new players. The and markers. then you play with corrupted Tamio and see how she got corrupted. And then you get, <laughs> oops, then you get the card and then you get, whatever all this stuff it's you can't sell it anyways just give it to the players oh my god and, yes uh, yeah make make it an experience like for me it's sometimes i maybe read about the story but they have so much story and it kind of ties back into the arcane netflix thing uh, netflix thing they could make us way more interested in just experiencing what they are doing they're like they have crazy stories unless it's more of the spark novel but they they could just do this and invest money that. into getting players interested in it. And I kind of just want a single player campaign for new players. It's just, it's got to be so hard to the the intro in Arena is just here do this, and then you get into the free play, and then you can press full control or whatever that does. Yeah. Like it's they are missing out on so much stuff with Arena. I would just put everything in Arena and just talk. I don't think Commander needs help, by the way. That's why I just would put anything, everything in Arena and just push this. And Commander, people will come to Commander and end up there probably mostly. <laughs> and I don't think we need to help it. But Phil, I, I like the, the, the single player on Arena so much that I'm actually angry right now that we don't have yeah. it. <laughs> like, <laughs> it. I it love Duel Duel Planeswalker. It's so casual friendly. <clears throat> There's like none of that social pressure or anything. Like, oh, I'm against an opponent. It's a real person. He can beat me. What if I lose yeah. or whatever? No, it's just like a, it's, it's a bot. It's a bot and you can take your time. And if you're like, if you know, you have to poop or something or your kid is crying <laughs> or something, you can go out of a room. Your opponent won't flame you because oh, it's a bot. Cuts. You know, it's like great. Oh my god! Why don't we have and, that? I love well, that. Like, I can tell other you games do it, like Hearthstone. That. Hearthstone has tons of yes. single player missions that actually like go along with the storyline. So you get the lore in there, and you learn the game. Like that does seem like a big miss. And you could teach people the game basically, and you're like, oh, you got like you got like three cards to add to your deck or whatever, and you learn <clears> very <throat> slowly and organically. The deck grows as you like progress through the story. They play so, Commander eventually, but first get them hooked on magic. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to piggyback off Tomer's answer. So I think Seth is right, but I still think standards not sustainable. Because essentially, at the end of the day, you're asking people to spend hundreds of dollars every year on pieces of cardboard. And people will wise up. Right? People will wise up. They're like, wait a minute. What if I told you magic cards are paper NFTs? <laughs> right because yeah. nfts are just digital magic cards right and then you're like oh wait a minute that sounds like a scam right because it is <laughs> right it's not sustainable to get people to buy essentially pieces of cardboard for a lot of money so i like tomer's idea of branching out into the ip space right if you have a killer movie or a killer netflix show you can make all kinds of money like you know based on the movie itself you can sell toys Good thing we're a part of Hasbro, a toy manufacturer, right? You you can do so much. Like, I would actually fire myself, take whatever money they threw at me, and try to hire someone from Disney or Marvel. Like, <laughs> Wait, you could just fire how, yourself? Oh, it's not that often. How, how I just run away from all the money. <laughs> Marvel, Bye, suckers. <laughs> how much money does Marvel make off people that have never read a single comic book? Right? Like... Yeah. You know, Marvel was a comic. They, they sell pieces of cardboard, too. It's pieces of paper, even cheaper cardboard, <laughs> for mm-hmm. lots of money. And they realize it's not sustainable. So they made movies and toys. And now you can buy, like, Marvel, literally everything, right? There's TV shows. There's movies, etc. You don't need to keep tricking people to buy comic books. 
that are overpriced, right? It's like four pages that are like colored, and then it's like a very expensive, right? So with this casual focus, like it's great, but casual players just won't spend that much money, right? So you you can. They're not casual. They spend thousands of dollars, Tomer. <laughs> Commander players would disagree with you, though. It's like, do I need, do I need to spend the, I don't know, how much is the special pooping Alish Norn picture one? Uh, is it like five hundred dollars or something? It's a monopoly of money. Eh? People will buy it because they're like, oh, I need it for my Commander deck. But it's like, you know, you don't. Are you cat? But are you, you casual you're at that wake point? Up one day and realize, like, what am I doing? It's a piece of cardboard, and it doesn't take much. Right, because if you buy a promo for a hundred dollars, and then next month they reprint it or something, and it's now fifty dollars, yeah. you're gonna suddenly get that shock that oh, it literally is just a cardboard that's worth nothing. Hasn't and... it been working for them like even this year though? Like they've been doing this trick for for decades, and it's yeah, been but so still so did the trading card industry and comic book industry for for a very long time <laughs> until they got too greedy, and then the yeah. bubble popped. And I made right? a lot NFTs, of money though. We're worth a lot of money until people <laughs> wised up and then the bubble popped, right? We, 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 have, we have paper NFTs here, right? So eventually it'll happen, I think. I, I don't think you yeah. can just switch to standard and make it sustainable. I, I think it's, it, it will stretch it out more, but you need to move your money making outside of gameplay. Like, you know what's even more casual than casual gameplay? Not playing at all, right? Just <laughs> like watching a Jace movie or something, right? Or... You know, buying some uh, Jace apples or something from Costco, some Jace hot pockets, if you hot will. Yeah, <laughs> some hot pockets. <laughs> I, I will say, I think y'all have way more confidence in me and Wizards being able to make a arcane level TV show. Oh, like, no, no, I no, just, no, 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 no. Wizards, you gotta, okay, okay. Then you, you take the money or and hiring poach a person the person that can from do it. Riot, or you poach the person from Disney yeah. or Marvel. <laughs> Like DC's whoever been to was copy in Marvel charge of the arcane time. they cannot thing. do it. I don't know who the yeah. special secret sauce person is, but you you gotta you gotta go poach them, right? And you gotta it's, invest there. Would, I would think they would have already done it because that's kind oh, of they did it, but they exactly left. what Hasbro it, does. Like that is their model. Like we make Transformers movie, we hire someone to make Transformers movies and sell tons of toys. Like that's. That uh, sadly, their failing model, which is why everyone <laughs> except Magic is losing tons of money. But yeah. like, that's what they do, and they haven't been able to do that with Magic for some reason. So it, it makes me skeptical that that plan would work because I feel like if if that actually was going to work, they would have. I mean, by they of all people, Hasbro would have done it by now. It's like high so, level of confidence, though. It's just like from- whoever is fucking up, uh, f- fudging <laughs> up, whoever is fudging us up has to just step down and you find the people who can actually make the arcane show so the funny thing is as far as probably somebody correct me in the comments but from what i have heard is that the russo brothers or something were uh doing the magic show and then they left the team because they thought this is going nowhere which sounds very very believable looking at what wizards does just i mean it's wizards they use every opportunity to mess up and, and all the spin-off I, games have failed spectacularly remember like the crappy oh, diablo game and there was the mobile game and it was like <laughs> they just it just keeps happening they just can't help how. Except every opportunity it's every impressive time they mess how up much in they a, fail yeah like, it's impressive it's, actually. wow I, I mean that that that's a leadership like they're not yeah, it's a leadership invent, like you know you don't give your ip to a small company that you don't have confidence will release a stellar game right like you not sell the magic netflix series to the lowest you know producer that will make it for the cheapest amount of money or whatever right like you need to make sure it comes out as a you know a blockbuster title so to speak right and I am sure you can do it. I'm sure you can will your way, like Seth said, just marketing money. Just throw enough money at it. Uh, just get enough big people and then let them do their thing. So mm-hmm. I think the, yes. the Russo brothers got tired of Wizards meddling with their affairs or whatever. Well, <laughs> They're like, we're out of here, right? I, I'm not putting my name behind this, right? Uh, but it's not easy, but they, they got to they gotta do it, right? They got to transition out of selling cardboard because especially with proxies, Especially with power creep, things like that. Like people, people get to figure out. But you know, you still watch a movie, right? Like you're not gonna be like, oh yes, evil corporation. You're like, oh no, it's a good movie, right? But mm-hmm. 
I mean, I don't think you're wrong about the movie. I just think it's ah, if it was if it was easy, they would have done it by now. And I just don't really trust wizards outside of making magic cards. Seems what, like what everything else they sell touch kind of falls Hasbro apart. Hasbro to Disney? Can Disney buy Hasbro? <laughs> We oh, really no. want every I single want, mega company to Mickey become Mouse under on one my, Yeah. And I don't that want sounds... Mickey Mouse on my cards. We already, well, they're already Disney doing it with Lorcana. Like I... Disney bought Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, You're doing Disney great. Yeah. The... I don't know. Isn't that called, like, aren't there antitrust laws to prevent this sort of thing? Like, isn't that the whole point of... Probably. <laughs> Like yeah. that's yeah. that seems dystopian. Capitalistic dystopian. <laughs> <laughs> have the, we, have the mouse run tone. everything, <laughs> and any other competition will be squashed under its mighty uh, like cartoon foot. I don't know. I don't like it. I, like, I have think... a question for Richard though. So oh, we, yeah. we were saying like, how do we how do we help Daddy Hasbro uh, make more monies? But how would you, Richard, fix Commander if you think it's not doing well? I would do what Seth did. I would just not print cards into Commander. So I think once a year, the Commander decks, you can power creep it slightly by adding new cards to the format. But then otherwise, just let it progress at a natural rate. So you're printing cards for Mm -hmm. standard, um, just standard. I think Modern has the exact same problems, by the way, where once they started printing products directly into Modern, Modern lost its charm. Even though it's balanced and it works and everything, it's just not what you think it would be because it keeps rotating uh so i say once a year you print five pre-cons and call it a day because right now standard sets are not standard sets they're called premier sets because they're filled with commander cards uh and then the set boosters contain cards that aren't even standard legal right and they contain like commander. more commander cards and then along with each set come uh commander pre-cons uh it's just like way too much product so just get rid of it uh once a year, Commander, and then don't power creep everything. Like it, it's hard because they printed so many cards now. Like, how do you print a new Commander that doesn't power creep? You know, do we need yeah. the twentieth Boros equipment Commander? Like, what do you do? Maybe add a new color. Like, how do you add more design space because they've kind of used it all up, right? Like, we, we new need card like type? the eighteenth Panormonicon <laughs> Commander and the twentieth Boros equipment Commander, right? Like, I don't, I don't know how you could keep printing <laughs> cards. And that's a problem when you print like two thousand cards a year. So just you print know what you do one set. You do, you know what you do Combine Richard. Them. You just take. Two, yes, two very popular legends, and you mash them together into one card and give them both names and pr- and print a few sets like that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yep. I don't want to say anything about them because like, it's too early, but oh my god. <laughs> Is there any so, yeah, I'm excited about them. <laughs> I do am not excited like about Avengers them. But... from 2018. <laughs> is there any legendary shark that could be on this? Like, I want a card yes. that is literally somebody jumping the shark on the card just so they acknowledge <laughs> what they're doing. Well, there's, that there's would be... Sharon and Brimaz, there's uh, the Ikoria partners, yeah, and then there's a flying partners. shark. So the that... shark is, is jumping as well, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how uh, I feel about them. The, the cards look so, funny, but funny. man, sure, you, everybody loves I like, Yargle. I like them, but All I have a Yargle so, plushie. So I got a question for you guys as we kind of get closer to the end. Where do you think Commander is going to be in ten years? John, Magic is thirty years old this year. Let's go to year forty. Ten years from now. What do you think the landscape's going to look like? Is it going to be more popular? About the same? Less popular? Is it still going to be? Supported is magic still going to be a game? Yeah, let's go in the in the time machine ten years in the future and give me your your hot take. The commander's dead in ten years. You think so? Dead, Do you think magic is no also longer, dead? It's no longer the focus. I think there is going to be another multiplayer uh, ish. There is going to be another a new commander in ten years. By the so like, time ten years. So like when Pioneer came in yeah, to pop- kind of like take over for modern like that sort yeah, of modern yeah, yeah, came yeah. in for legacy like that something equivalent to that for commander yeah the format is too far gone we squeezed it too hard for all it's worth and people finally got fed up <laughs> and we had to make a new format and we're going to squeeze that one eventually too but <laughs> it'll take some time uh i think that's where we're gonna be but i think we still have like a good like i think commander is gonna be still like the the premier or the the focused 
uh, format for like another five years at least, I think. And it's and it's going to be like a slow decline where people just get more and more fed up until eventually people are just like leaving. And then and then it's like a cascading effect. Like once people start leaving, then more people start leaving because your your play groups are falling apart. More people. And then it just goes really, really quickly. Yeah. I like Commander, though. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. Like, do you see <laughs> yourself? Like a bummer. <laughs> because I don't see my I just don't play with Raghavan or whatever like not that Raghavan is crazy but I don't play with Druid Lotus for example or mm-hmm. Smothering Tithe I just don't play the cards and my play group hopefully doesn't as well <laughs> one somebody plays Rhystic Study over there but uh, mm-hmm. so just kind of ign- ignore the power creep essentially just like within your play group if there's cards that are yeah. too power creepy or you don't like just for us they yeah, don't exist basically if the alternative is stop playing I don't know. I like it's very hard for me to imagine ten years in the future, especially yeah. if they keep printing cards. Like at some point, they have to power creep even Sithis, which is I don't know how they would even do this, but they would have to power creep everything. Give it Ward Five, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It, on the other hand, the power creep cards are like super impactful design for Commander. Not not even. Power crap. For example, Aminatus Augury is like a commander card, and I mm-hmm. love it. It's super random and super impactful, and just obviously designed for like crazy decks or just. I love the card. I don't. I'm not even sure if I would cut everything. Like, if I would have more fun, if everything designed for commander would be gone, I I don't know how sustainable it is, but I don't see me stopping maybe there's a new format maybe plane chase is coming back maybe that's that's cool I don't even know what it is the return of two minute giant finally we'll get a magical line they took it from us they took us from us in battle bond I want back wizards I didn't forget (laughs) I didn't forgive so I I think what do you think Richard there will be a post apocalyptic apocalyptic world I can't say the word where (laughs) commander will implode it won't really implode. I, I think there's like a bandwagon effect. It's like our team just won the Super Bowl. So the next year, the stadiums are like chock full of like fans who have like, come on, like, yeah, cool. But the minute it gets tough, everyone leaves. Uh, I think people get fed up by power creep or maybe, um, you know, maybe too many new cards and things like that. And they'll kind of just disperse out and you'll be left with kind of the hardcore magic players. And I think those magic uh, hardcore magic players are 1v1 60 card format players yes. who will who will continue to play and research whatever sideboard options and you know try to guess what deck their opponent's playing by the first land and you know that kind of stuff like th- those super enfranchised players will stick around so i think at some point we're gonna return to that um hopefully like commander just doesn't die off it just like loses a little popularity and then um, 1v1 goes, but I think people get fed up eventually. I, I think you're starting to see it. I think people are looking at the amount of products and the amount of previews now, and they're like, what the heck is going on? And how much more can you push that before people just become like me? You're like, why buy anything? Just wait, because something new and better is coming out, right? Or why buy anything? Like, the, the price will be halved, or I can wait for the secret layer, or whatever, and then you just end up doing nothing and making proxies. So I, I think eventually that will start happening. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But I think 60 cards will stay. Like, just like now, there's still people grinding the Pro Tour, even though Pro Play is dead. Like, I think those people will carry on the game uh, <sighs> if we don't shoot them all out. <laughs> this is... <laughs> So my my take might be too optimistic, but I think that Commander is very close to its ceiling right now, its peak with how popular it can possibly be. And I think that 60 card formats are kind of near their floor with how unpopular that they uh, they can possibly be. So I think 10 years from now, hopefully, what I would like to see is uh, we're going to see 60 card formats kind of regain their footing and increase in popularity. And I think we're going to see Commander probably go back down a little bit in popularity and i'm hopeful that we end up in a world where 60 card formats and commander are both popular and viable options for for people to play so i think that's what i envision i i I think that that's probably the direction that we'll head the question is does wizards 
figure it out soon enough to to get to that point. And uh, hopefully the, they will. But I, I think we're going to see 60 card and commander be popular 10 years from now. And Hasbro recently say that they're going to be slowing down on the product release and stuff coming the next quarter and also stock shareholders don't be too too worried when we announce that we're going to have like a lower profits for the next couple of things because we are slowing down blah blah, blah. so there, there might be they might be even salvaging it themselves that. maybe maybe even yeah. top brass is like oh it's hurting our bottom line actually if we keep doing this richard yeah. richard does not look uh so, 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 look. so the real answer is to what i would do as ceo is uh, I would come in, I would uh, reprint Dual Lands, make, you know, a hundred million dollars in bonus money because I sold so much product. And then, <laughs> and then peace quit. out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> first step and, and is you tell all your buddies to with... sell reserve list cards. <laughs> then you announce that we're reprinting the <laughs> exactly. reserve list. Yeah, the, the, the problem is, like, everyone is kind of short-sighted and, like, optimizing for themselves. And, like, no one... Yeah is willing to take the risk on like this 10 year plan like what if you made the netflix series and it tanked it's like it's you're screwed you spent so much money on it right <laughs> but if i just made another yeah. secret layer that's like guaranteed to make me like yeah. so much money right so i think that's part of the problem we meme on it but even if they're not trying to be evil like as ceo your best interest is to make as much money as possible given this position before you're inevitably fired for probably reasons that you know, are not your fault, but you're going to take the fall for anyway. So you might as well make as much money uh, while you're there. And uh, I mean, that's same with politics, right? It's like you got you got four years to do what you need yeah. to do to get really reelected, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah. So with that, there uh, we have proposed how to fix uh magic so so thank you wizards you can send our payment and our royalties uh, to mtg goldfish again we did you a solid uh and here here's why we'll, we'll even crowdsource from the smartest fans in the magic community they too will post their ways to fix commander well actually first do you agree on the professor's hot take maybe you don't agree with all and maybe commander is fine as is and should be the center of magic forever and if not, what should we do to fix it? If you were instilled as the CEO of Hasbro for um, for a year, you have one year to fix it. <laughs> uh, so let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know on Twitter. And uh, yeah, let us know what you thought of this format. It was kind of just loosey-goosey reacting to the professor's uh, hot take. Uh, I don't know if we added any spicier takes in here than the professor. Uh, Professor was smart. He just gave a one-liner and peaced out. Yeah, we, yeah, we had a yeah. whole discussion so people can pick us all apart. Uh, so yeah, so let us know in the comments, and uh, we'll see you all next week. See ya. I don't. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>